And a game number three tonight in Indianapolis. We are very pleased right now here on this Friday on the early line to welcome on CP the franchise, the creator of Knicks Fans TV. You can see him also hosting on Sirius XM NBA Radio. CP the franchise joins us here to get you set for game number three tonight in Indy and look back on the playoff run so far for the New York Knicks. CP, we appreciate the time. Thank you for being here on this Friday on the early line. Ben, always a pleasure to be on with you, and, and Donnie, pleasure to connect for the first time, man. I love this show, so happy to be here. Yeah, we are having a good time for sure, but probably not as good as you are throughout this postseason run for the New York Knicks. They have played eight playoff games. They have won six of them. The opening round series victory against the Philadelphia 76ers, and now CP, a 2-0 series advantage over the Indiana Pacers, winning both of the opening two games of this set inside Madison Square Garden. How would you describe the run so far in this playoff stretch for the Knicks? I would say euphoric because, uh, you know, I say this all the time on my show, no one does storylines, no one does moments better than the New York Knicks, a franchise that has been without a title for 50-plus years. But time and time again, they just seem to come up with those magical moments that you talk about for days on end. In the first round of the Philly series, is the Game 2 magic of Dante DiVincenzo. Then in Game 2, May 8th, 2024, Jalen Brunson, Leaves the game in the first quarter. This is on the anniversary of the Knicks winning their first championship when Willis Reed comes out of the tunnel. And what does Jalen Brunson do? Mm. He comes out of the tunnel at the in the second half, goes on a torrid pace, destroys the Pacers, puts the Knicks on his back, and, and wins that game. So you just can't make it up. So 2-0 lead. The, the fan base is electrified right now, and, and they are rallying behind the seat. CP, let's talk about doing it on the biggest stage because so many times in the NBA we hear this. Boy, we get up when we go to Madison Square Garden because it's the mecca of basketball gear, and it takes a unique athlete to take that torch. Now, Carmelo Anthony was certainly beloved by the New York fan base but never sort of got them over the mountaintop, but he was willing yeah. to say, I want to come back to New York. I want to be the centerpiece. Jalen Brunson choo chooses New York. We knew he was a great player coming from Dallas, but talk about on the biggest stage, night after night after night with all that pressure, and he looks like an absolute God out there on the court. Talk to us about that New York atmosphere and why Brunson is absolutely thriving right now. Man, so many reasons to be impressed with this kid. And just when you thought you, you couldn't be impressed anymore, he gives you more reason to just love what he's bringing to this mm -hmm. game. Number one, I, it starts with his mental makeup. That comes from his family. He comes from a stable family, a great family. His father, a hardworking grinder in the NBA, an NBA journeyman who understood the tax, the grit, and the grind that it took to be successful. And so he took his experience and applied that to his son. And so with Jalen Brunson, you see the hard work, the dedication, the work ethic on display every single night to be the best and to hold himself accountable when he does not have good games. Look at his footwork out there. Look at the way that he dissects defenses. I mean, his adjustments to what defenses are giving him is second to none. And this is where superstars make their bread and butter. It is on the playoff stage. Yeah. And when guys are able to elevate their game against pressure defenses, mentally and physically worn down from the grind of, a, of a, a entire regular season, to elevate your game on that next stage, it's special, especially under the bright lights of New York City and Madison Square Garden. Jalen Brunson, 35 points, eight assists in this series in the postseason. Mm. I mean, he, he's just been so spectacular for this team. Four straight 40-plus point games entering game number two. Only had 29 in the victory over Indiana. Probably would have had 40 if he did not miss yeah. the entirety of the second quarter in that second game. But injuries a concern, CP, as we move this series forward. Of course, the left hamstring injury sidelines OG and an OB for game number three. He had 28 points in the first three quarters of game number two, arguably, arguably the best of his playoff career. How significant of an injury and an absence is this for the Knicks entering game three tonight in Indy? Oh, it's huge. No question about it. And you, you were looking at OG Ananobi having his best game of the playoffs. And he had a couple of good ones in that Philadelphia series, as Donnie knows. But, you know, to lose him at 28 points on that night, he was killing Pascal Siakams on both ends of the floor, taking him out of the game defensively. This is their only wing. I mean, the Knicks have needed a wing for so long. And the one that they got in OG Ananobi has been such a dynamo for this team in terms their winning percentage and his impact on the court, it's a huge loss. It, it is no no question a huge loss. I don't expect him back 
in this series. I think that the hope for the Knicks is that, uh, you know, they, they can wrap this series up early. Maybe Cleveland gives Boston a little bit of trouble, and hopefully you can get OG Ananobi back later on in an Eastern Conference Finals. But that was a devastating blow to see him leave that game with the hamstring injury. And for the rest of the team, it's like, you know, you're almost looking at, you know, when will the shoe drop? Because these guys are playing yeah. so many minutes. Josh Hart, every, he's playing 48 minutes a night. Dante DiVincenzo, Jalen Brunson. So these guys are giving it their all. But it's just, you have to wonder, is it sustainable? That next man up attitude, which New York, you know, that crowd absolutely loves. You saw it in the regular season. Yeah. Randall goes down, doesn't come back. OG Ananobi was down for some time, and it was really Brunson. Now, also, Brunson injury concerns coming into tonight. If I gave you a player to look at outside of Brunson tonight, who needs to step up for the New York Knicks? It's going to be none other than Alec Burks because with, with nobody <laughs> left to go to, he is the guy that Tom Thibodeau is going to have to dust off. A guy who Tom Thibodeau has relied upon earlier when, in his first stint with the Knicks hasn't been as great when he was reacquired at the, uh, at the trade deadline. Alec Burks has to step up. He will likely come off the bench. He has to be that guy. He's got to be a microwave scorer for the Knicks. And if he can be that, I still like their chances in winning and getting past the Pacers in this series. Tonight is going to be their toughest one. Game three is always the toughest on the road, the first one on the road, but Alec Burks is, is yeah. my guy here. All right, so quickly here, CP. Less than a minute left in this segment. A seven-point spread in favor of the Pacers in Indy tonight. Can we get a quick score prediction from you for game number three between the Knicks and the Pacers? I go 114-112 Knicks. I think th their ability Ooh, to just play woo. physical – where the Pacers down on the boards and the clutch factor. The Knicks have it. The Pacers don't. Rick Carlisle can complain all he wants. TJ McConnell can't save him. <laughs> it is the Brunson burner time, and he's going to put on another show in Indy tonight. CP, the franchise, the creator of Knicks Fan TV. You can also hear him We're on ready. Sirius XM NBA Radio. CP, enjoy game number three on this Friday. I know that you certainly will. More on the early line comes your way up next, live right here on the Sports Grid Network.